of all the films you could have started with, to, you chose this one. Why is that? I don't know. I think it chose me in some respects. Um, the script was sent to me, I read it, and something that I didn't completely intellectually understand affected me about the story. And then as I started working on the movie, uh, it became clear to me that I was really intrigued by the aspect of the story that you can find yourself in your 40s and 50s and that there is an act two. There's a second chance for you to redefine your life and to, and to experience it in a new and astonishing way. And also I think I was really affected by the idea of how loss can transform you and, and that how through the process of grieving you can rediscover who you are and, and shed things that need to be shed and grow and that process is painful but it's also transformational. So those two aspects I think ultimately are why I did the movie but at the time I, I signed on I was really intrigued because I'd never done anything that was this for lack of better words emotionally fragile and intimate. So I wanted to figure out what I would learn about myself as a human being and as an, as an artist and a director by working on something like this. Tell us about the casting process. <laughs> how did you go about casting these two wonderful actors? Well, they were cast before me, so you should ask them how they feel about having me as a director. You know, so they were involved uh, from the very beginning, and I was really thrilled about that, because in addition to having the off-spoke of charisma and chemistry, they're both wonderful actors, but also they, on film, they, despite their attractiveness and their charisma, they come across as human beings. And so I knew at the center of the story there had to be this, this th that you had to feel like you were watching Adrian and Paul not, you know, not star and star go through a journey. And so I was really thrilled about that. And then, you know, able to add in, you know, a bunch of other wonderful actors, Scott Glenn, James Franco, Chris Maloney, Viola Davis. It was, th it was thrilling, thrilling. What is it about uh, Diane Lane and, and, and Richard Gere? What, 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 is, what is that special thing about them? I think as actors, they have tremendous trust. I think they know each other very well. They like each other very well, so, so, very much so, so that therefore when they're working together, there's, it's only the work. It's only the work. They're not navigating these precarious sort of dynamics that can frequently inform, you know, relationships on film, so that therefore they can just go for it. They can go for it in a, in a unguarded way because the trust is there. And, and also there, they have this spark between them that is just there, and I think it's very compelling, and it, it invites the audience into the journey. It invites the audience, and you know, there's, there, there, there are certain kinds of, for lack of a better word, stars where their appeal is distancing. And I think with Richard and Diane, their appeal, you, it sucks you in, it draws you in to what these characters are going through, which is a wonderful uh, quality in a movie like this where you are watching these people sort of transform in a moment-to-moment -moment very subtle way. When you're, when you're working with the actors, I mean, it's, you're, you're coming from stage, it's a very, it's a very different animal. Uh, how, how, how do you pull back? How do you, how do you work? It's, ultimately, I don't, I don't know. For me, it's not that different. I mean, it's, it, regardless of what the medium is, what you're doing is you're trying to tell the story, and what you're trying to locate is the immediacy and the intimacy of the story. Now, when you're dealing with the theater, there's, there are dynamics that you have to deal with that are strictly external, which have to do with projection and filling up a space so that, therefore, the... 300 or the 1,200 people who are witnessing that event can be invited into the process. With film, you don't have to do that because the camera is moving in and defining the level of intimacy that an audience is experiencing. But it's fundamentally the, the, the way I talk to actors when I'm directing a play, the way I talk to actors when I'm directing a film doesn't alter. It, it, nothing is different. You're, you're, you're still dealing with human beings who think they know more than they know in situations where things happen to them and everything they think they know is questioned. I mean, that's, that's, that's the fundamental dynamic of every single story. And then how they, how they rise to the occasion, how they don't rise to the occasion, defines, you know, the nature of the story. So I, I don't find it that different. There are a series of externals that you have to adjust, but, you know, the medium tells you what to do, and so you do it. It's just 
painting. You, you're, it's just how you want to paint the story and how you want to engage the actors in the process of the moment-to-moment -moment discoveries that their characters are going through. Which would you say was, was your inspiration when you were, when you were working on this one? What film? Mm -hmm. Or filmmaker? Um, I don't... I don't think I had any sort of key filmmaker that I was, I, I, I was thinking about. I, I just try, anytime I do a project, I try to obey the story. I try to obey the intimacy of the story. And so I don't think about other films or other kinds of entertainment. I only go inside. Generally, I respond to music a lot. And uh, somehow Dinah Washington, which ends up being used in the movie, was very important to me. And so I, I respond much more to sounds when I'm thinking about a movie.